Welcome to another edition of News Bites here on Daily World Television. My name is Cal Korf and I'm your host. The race for space or to be number one in space is heating up now between China, the United States, Europe of course, and India. But who's really going to win? Right now, unless these other nations get serious to the degree that the United States was, at least against the former Soviet Union in the 1960s, there's no question that communist China is going to win. Let me explain why. The Chinese are due to land on the moon in the near future. And while the United States did it decades ago and actually remains the only country in history to put human beings on the moon, that record will not last forever. But here is where China has an advantage and it's pressing its leverage. And unless, once again, other countries do something to stop it, they're going to win. The Chinese historically are famous or infamous, depending on what incident from history you choose to examine, for thinking for the long term. Thinking not one year ahead, but decades ahead. So what China is doing is China is building entire cities and infrastructure centered around the idea that they're going to be the number one power in outer space. What they're doing is improving manufacturing. They're setting up entire technological centers so that much of the material in certain areas of China will not only be state of the art, what these industries and towns will churn out will be dedicated and benefit the space race and, let's be honest, their military, which is really driving a lot of this. So China views this as a win-win. Just like during the Cold War, one of the reasons that the Apollo program was so ambitious was not only from a scientific point of view, but from a military point of view. After all, big rockets that can carry men into space can also ferry up nuclear warheads as well, intercontinental ballistic missiles or even space-based weapons, and China, of course, would love to weaponize space. They already have anti-space weapons, as in satellite blinders and satellite killers. They successfully tested those years ago. Now, this is where India is going to be the wild card, because although India is absolutely on its way to being a key global player, it's already proven its mettle when it sent a probe to Mars, as well as its recent record-breaking launch of satellites, India needs to do a lot more along the lines of China to have any chance of competing against China, and India is just not going to do that. So instead, India seems content, unfortunately, to just take these scraps of whatever falls off the table on the floor and pick them up, or just be paid money to launch commercial satellites and once in a while do some scientific stuff that no one else has done before. Big deal. Sorry. What needs to be done is a country to be number one for space exploration needs to dedicate its national resources to achieving that. If you don't get serious about it, your competition will. So in the United States, private enterprise is taking over the space race and China views Elon Musk's SpaceX uh, reusable rocket as a threat, both military-wise and uh, commercial space-wise. It also views the Blue Horizon reusable rocket by Amazon.com's billionaire founder Jeff Bezos as a threat as well. And of course the Chinese are targeting that. So what you have once again is a situation where China is looking at both private enterprise competitors as well as military or national or government competitors as in other nations. And India is rather interesting in this mix because they seem to deliberately be setting themselves up to be relegated to just a glorified space delivery systems network or a rocket or workhorse that can just ferry up payloads in exchange for being paid to do so and that's about it with some occasional scientific stuff going up once in a while but nothing that is a real game changer except for India itself and since it's starting from nothing if it does anything that's an improvement. So let's not confuse what India seems to be doing or heading versus what China is doing. China's long march into space is not only set up to conquer the space market and dominate it the way the U.S. did in the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s, 
but it is also set up to facilitate the means to have a permanent presence in space and colonies on the moon and eventually Mars and maybe even asteroids that might be brought into close Earth orbit, locked in transit, and their precious minerals and resources can be mined. China already has cornered many markets to supply vitally uh, needed minerals and elements. These are, uh, and resources such as oil, again, trying to do asteroid mining would be in perfect compliance or line with the way that the communist Chinese think. So once again, China is on the threshold now of starting with its next major launch where it will drop a rover on the moon. This will be its first significant step towards being a permanent space player. And if other countries don't realign or readjust what they do or work together to stop them, there is no question that unless China gets bored and just drops out, they're going to win.